St. Petersburg, known for its elegance and grandeur, is swamped in gorgeous architecture, with stately palaces and cathedrals jostling for space amid the city's numerous canals and waterways. It is Russia's second-largest city after Moscow. Located at the mouth of the Neva River on the banks of the Gulf of Finland, it was founded in 1703 by Peter the Great and served as the Russian Empire's capital for centuries. Artists and builders, as well as composers, scientists, and writers were all drawn to its shores. This transformed the city into a cultural powerhouse, with world-class ballet, classical music, and theater performances taking place alongside opulent opera houses. With its museums, historical tourist attractions, and palaces, St. Petersburg offers a diverse range of activities. Due to its endless summer days, the city is known as the City of White Nights. It is a magical place to visit at any time of year. Let's look at some of the top things to do in St. Petersburg. Number 1. Peter and Paul Fortress The original purpose of the Peter and Paul Fortress was to protect the state from outside invasions. It was built in 1703, and throughout the next four decades, it was extended and remodeled. While the castle was never used in actual warfare, it did serve as a prison and execution quarters during the Bolshevik Revolution in the early 20th century. It is now part of the State Museum of St. Petersburg's history. There are various buildings within the fortress's walls, which are flanked by magnificent gardens and stone walks. The 18th century Peter and Paul Cathedral, the final resting place of Russian Tsars, is perhaps the most well-known. Within the fortress's walls are additionally prison cells, a city museum, and the St. Petersburg Mint Building, established in 1724 to make coins and still in operation. Number 2. Palace Square the main city plaza in St. Petersburg is a vast open public space directly in front of the Winter Palace. The Alexander Column, made of a single piece of red granite and standing 47 meters tall in the center of the square, was built in the 1830s. Alexander I commissioned it to celebrate his triumph over Napoleon. Many significant events in Soviet and Russian history have occurred on the square. Tsar Alexander II was assassinated here in 1879 and Bolshevik troops began the revolution here in 1917 by storming the Winter Palace, where the royalty resided. Since then, Hyria has seen a variety of marches and demonstrations, ranging from military parades commemorating World War II's Victory Day to New Year's Eve celebrations. Number 3. Peterhof Palace Because Peterhof Palace is 45 minutes from the city, you should plan on, on spending at least half a day there. It is, however, well worth it. This sumptuous palace, located on the Gulf of Finland, is often known as the Russian Versailles. It's easy to understand why, whether it's because of the gilded domes or the fountains strewn around the sprawling gardens. Surprisingly, the gardens at Peterhof contain more than 60 fountains and 200 statues. The Grand Cascade, the most famous, is a must-see site in St. Petersburg. Don't miss a visit to the magnificent Peterhof Palace. The inside features classic state rooms, the elaborate ceremonial staircase, and the grand ballroom, to name a few. There's more to the gardens outside than just the amazing collection of fountains. A canal in Lower Park flows directly into the Gulf of Finland, making it a perfect site for a picnic. Number 4. Vasilevsky Island This small island, which is just across the river from the city center and the Winter Palace, and is connected to the mainland by two bridges and a metro line is home to a number of landmarks and beautiful parks, including a Museum of Electrical Transport, the Peter the Great Museum of Anthropology and Ethnography, the old St. Petersburg Stock Exchange, and the Baroque Menshikov Palace, which serves as a branch of the Heritage Museum and houses mostly 17th-century Russian art. The Russian Academy of Sciences maintains numerous branches on the island, including the Institute of Russian Literature, which houses genuine manuscripts of some of Russia's most famous writers, including adored poet Alexander Pushkin. Number 5. Nevsky Avenue The 4.5-kilometer-long Nevsky Prospect, or Avenue, is the hub of St. Petersburg. Named after the Alexander Nevsky Lavra Monastery that is on the same street, Nevsky Avenue is home to the 18th-century Great Gostiny Dvor, one of the world's oldest shopping arcades, as well as a plethora of high-end stores, fine restaurants, and luxury hotels. The late Baroque Stroganov Palace, the early 19th-century Kazan Cathedral, and the Russian National Library, housed in a building dating back to the 1700s, are all located on Nevsky Prospect. 
which is known for its opulent architecture. Even if you have no intention of shopping, the lights and ambience of this road are worth seeing. Along the route, you'll come across Street Artist, a 1913 movie theater, and the Anishkov Bridge, which was severely damaged during World War II and was repaired with shell damage from Nazi weapons as a reminder of what happened here. Number 6. Church of the Savior on Spilled Blood Savior on Spilled Blood was built on the spot where Tsar Alexander II was murdered in an attack. Hence the horrific and graphic name Spilled Blood. Despite the fact that St. Petersburg is full of churches, this one is perhaps the most beautiful, which is why it made our list. On the inside, the colorful church is just as bright and extravagant with one of the world's largest collections of mosaics. Most people compare it to Russia's St. Basil's Cathedral, which is also one of the country's most well-known landmarks. Any tour of the city will take you by the Cathedral of the Savior of the Spilled Blood, probably several times. It's close to the State Russian Museum, and there are plenty of other attractions around. Furthermore, Alexander II was a pivotal character in Russian history. If you have the time, a one-hour audio tour of the church is highly recommended. It will tell you about the history and building of the church. St. Isaac's Cathedral and Colonnade is another religious structure worth visiting when in St. Petersburg. It's easy to spot thanks to its golden dome. Number 7. Catherine Palace The beautiful Catherine Palace, located 30 kilometers south of the city, is where the Russian Tsars came to relax and unwind during the summer months. The palace's large and showy style stems from 1752, when architect Bartolomeo Ross Trelli renovated and redecorated the existing structure, coating it with beautiful stuccos. The Rococo Castle is painted a vivid bluish green, with white columns and gold statues and ornaments standing out beautifully. It truly is a wonderful sight. You can visit a variety of opulent ballrooms on the premises. The golden and fillet of state rooms is without a doubt the most impressive, although the Amber Room and Grand Hall are also worth seeing. The palace is nestled amid some brilliantly put out and planted gardens, which are excellent for taking a peaceful stroll and after all the overwhelming splendor you've just taken in. It is named after Catherine I, who commissioned it. Number 8. Rivers and Canals the canals of St. Petersburg were previously utilized to avoid floods, and while they still do, they are now mostly used for transit and to enjoy lovely cruises along the Neva. The canal system runs for more than 300 kilometers, with hundreds of pedestrian and vehicular bridges spanning it. The Gribo-Yedov Canal and the Winter Canal are the two most popular canals. The Gribo-Yedov Canal runs alongside the Church of Our Savior on the spilled blood and under 21 bridges. The Winter Waterway, the city's shortest canal, connects the Winter Palace and the Hermitage Theater. Small and big, boats move across the canals, with some providing food, live music, or unique English-language tours, such as special rides to see the bascule bridges open at midnight. Number 9. Cruiser Aurora The former Russian naval ship Aurora is a fortified cruiser with an armored deck. Built in the early 1900s, it saw action in the Russo-Japanese War from 1904 to 1905, and it survived the Battle of Tsushima, in which Russia suffered significant casualties in both human life and ships sunk or destroyed. A discharge from an Aurora cannon also signaled the start of the Russian Revolution in 1917. The Aurora is now moored on the Neva River and is the Central Naval Museum's most popular branch. Visitors can tour the ship's six separate rooms, which include recreations of ordinary living, such as how passengers ate and slept, photographs and paintings, and model ships. While access to the Aurora is free, the engine room is only accessible for an extra fee. The view from the deck of the Aurora is stunning, with imperial buildings and rocking waters all around. Number 10. St. Isaac's Cathedral St. Isaac's Cathedral is one of the largest churches in the world. Regardless of denomination, its massive gold-plated dome can be seen from practically anywhere in St. Petersburg. Throughout 100 huge columns, together with many smaller domes, were erected over the course of the 40-year construction process. The interior is even more stunning, with stunning reliefs and mosaics, and iconostases covering every available surface. Although it still hosts services, the Soviet government converted St. Isaac's Cathedral into a museum in 1931, and it remains so to 